This video is about the Sestui KVA Trust and Birth Certificate, which is essential to understand how the legal system is fraudulent in its application of justice. It's also a way to understand how a truly honorable system can work if we seek to understand and live the principles of truth and trust. The systems of control and enslavement are based on core principles of natural law as expressed in equity or contract law and trust law. But the system fails in execution, following the principles of trust on which legal codes are founded. Dishonorable legislation like the Patriot Act would have never been enacted if the people were fully aware of all the facts via full disclosure and transparency. To suppress the rights of the people and maintain the illusion of justice, the system requires compliance and ignorance. This is why humanity thinks the system works despite being hopelessly inefficient, because they're ignorant of today's whole truth and justice that is not following law or honoring trust. There are remedies on paper that individuals should be able to use, but even after one correctly asserts their rights, no remedy is rendered by the system. The law is ignored and alleged courts breach trust as a matter of policy. U.S. judges are incompetent, discriminatory, and in breach of contract. Some sovereigns believe if we say the right thing or file the correct paperwork, the system will be forced to comply with the law. But in truth, the system has never been designed for this. It's designed to appear lawful, acting in the color of law as an illusion of justice. The system is a for-profit private enterprise that has usurped a once valid method of settling disputes that now deceives and defrauds their patrons, the unwitting citizens. It's become a summary justice system of fast food justice offering the disastrous effects on society like processed food, Knowledgeable people follow the rules and procedures within the system, hoping to gain remedy and reclaim their sovereignty, but the system ignores valid claims and honorable arguments. The conclusion is that there is no justice, no rule of law, and no remedy for the people. No amount of paperwork, protests, certified letters, or official documentation will cause the system to act honorably because it must do so for everyone if it is to be a truly just system. A court judge or trustee that ignores the truth by their very actions demonstrates the status of incompetency, negligence, and lack of standing to hold the position they claim to represent. They are now in breach of trust and breach of public contract. They have committed fraud, and the only recourse a sovereign has in the face of this is to embody honor and truth so as to replace the corrupt system. In the absence of legitimate government and true justice, the people's justice reigns supreme. So we must ensure it is honest and fair. Despite these sobering points, there's hope. The people have always had the power to settle their own affairs honorably and in truth. But when two sovereigns can't settle a dispute, a third party may be appointed by them to assist. This is the role of a justice system. One's ability to seek truth Act compassionately and acknowledge others and satisfy obligations is part of what defines a sovereign. Do no harm and cause no damage to property is the common sense policy called the golden rule of law and is the foundation of every justice system, including defunct ones running rampant. When we encounter someone who is dishonorable, a defensive action can be taken to ensure we're not harmed. But our action must not cause harm in return. Eye for an eye justice creates more harm that must be remedied. An important sovereign quality is the capacity to seek truth and gain, use and clarify knowledge so they recognize the interconnectedness of everything, and that love, compassion, and empathy are essential to settling disputes with other sovereigns. A sovereign must be responsible, know where they're going, how they'll get there, and who will be affected in the process. With freedom comes responsibility, requiring wisdom, truth, and harmony. The following quote is from Judge Dale's book, The Great American Adventure, Secrets of America. The quote is about the Sestui Kevia Trust, that is an account you inherited due to the bankruptcy of the United States in 1933 and the subsequent seizing of all the citizens' gold, silver, and other assets as collateral. This account contains billions of dollars in your name. 
The problem is the government and legal system failed to inform you about it and how to access your funds while they are drawing down on it for their own personal use and as payment to the Vatican and English crown. Quote, it is the funds contained in this sestui cavier that the judge, clerk, and county prosecutor are really after or interested in. This trust actually pays all of your debts, but nobody tells you that because the elite consider those assets to be their property, and the Federal Reserve System is responsible for the management of those investments. Social Security, SSI, SSD, Medicare and Medicaid are all financed by the trust. The government makes you pay taxes and a portion of your wages supposedly to pay for these services, which they can borrow at any time for any reason since they cannot access the Testuikivi Trust to finance their wars or to bail out Wall Street and their patron corporations. You may receive a monthly statement from a mortgage company, loan company, or utility company, which usually has already been paid by the trust. These corporate businesses double dip and hope you've been conditioned by their credit scams to pay them a second time. Instead of paying that statement next time, sign it approved and mail it back to them. If they then contact you about payment, ask them to send you a true bill instead of a statement and you will be glad to pay it. A statement documents what was due and paid, whereas a true bill represents only what is due. Banks and utility companies have direct access into these Kestuikevia trusts and all they needed was your name, social security number, and signature. Unquote. Trust relationships are valid arguments in court. And there are techniques for gaining freedom from the summary justice process that involves asserting your standing as executor to the trust, using a writ process that requires complete knowledge of all factors involved. Even then, the system will likely not act honorably. For the Sestui Kevia Trust, there are methods of declaring status as a living executor. The highest position of authority in the trust relationship, this method is founded in law, but in most cases, the judge would rather abandon the court than lose their standing. To claim the Sestui Kevia birth certificate trust account is a very sensitive process. If we mention Title 31 U.S. Code 1321-1322 Nationality Act, 1940, the judge will likely freak out. We must inform the judge that we are the executor of the trial and the judge is the administrator of the trial and publicly define the roles of the CQV trust. The judge is unlawfully attempting to access our trust and can do so only through our consent by deceiving us into agreeing to let them assume improper roles which grant them authority. This is the corrupt reality that our peaceful, law-abiding communities are dealing with in the court system today. There are roles of the Sestui Kevia Trust. We, the living man or woman, are the beneficiary of the trust. The judge is the trustee and the clerk is the administrator. Both judge and clerk must follow our instructions for discharge or dismissal as we are the executor of the trial and beneficiary of the trust. When they fail to do so, they dishonor their role and breach the trust, the highest crime in trust law. This is grounds for immediate termination of responsibilities, but in many cases, the judge will still retain possession via use of violence, the police, bailiff, bondsman, and sheriff. The racketeering judges of these fraud courts have no powers without the consent of both the plaintiff and defendant. In all cases, the judge must determine that he has consent personam and subject matter jurisdiction before he can act or access the Testicay Trust. All tradable securities must be assigned a QCIP number before it can be offered to investors. Birth certificates and social security applications are converted into government securities. Assigned a QZIP number, grouped into lots and then are marketed as a mutual fund investment. Upon maturity, the profits are moved into a government Kestika trust and if we're still alive, the certified documents are reinvested. It's the funds contained in this Kestika trust in which the judge, clerk, and county prosecutor are really interested. This trust pays for all our debts, but nobody tells us that because the elite consider those assets to be their property and the Federal Reserve System is responsible for the management of those investments. We must declare our status properly at court and when filing documents into the record, we say it as follows. I'm here by special appearance, sui juris autonomous on personam, as the belligerent claimant in person. We also say the following. 
In addition, for the record, I am the authorized administrator and executor of the Sesta Quay Trust, created under the all caps name John Q. Doe. You are the trustee, state, Mr. Prosecutor, and I do not consent to being surety for these proceedings. In addition, I demand the bond be immediately brought forward so I can see who will indemnify me if I am damaged." Unquote. At our arraignment or trial, the judge will attempt to trick us into an adhesion contract by asking if we are the all-caps birth-named individual on the complaint. Our natural response will be to answer, yes, that is exactly what we don't want to do. Instead, we produce our birth certificate and respond by stating, I am making special limited appearance on behalf of the defendant who is right here. And we hold our birth certificate high in the air above our head. Then we state the following. As I understand the process, judge, the county attorney or police officer has filed a criminal charge with the clerk against the trust using the all caps name that appears on this birth certificate. The use of capital letters is dictated by the U.S. printing style manual, which explains how to identify a corporation. The clerk, who is the administrator of the Sesta Quay Trust then, appointed you judge as trustee for the trust. And since neither of you can be the beneficiary, that leaves me and therefore you are my trustee. So as my trustee, I instruct you to discharge this entire matter with prejudice and award the penalties for these crimes to be paid to me in compensation and damages for my false arrest." Unquote. The law of trust dictates that an administrator, trustee, and beneficiary cannot serve two positions in a trust. So, a trustee cannot also be a beneficiary. The trustee judge has no alternative but to honor our demands. But we must confidently get this correct. We must know this information well, so we can't be hoodwinked or confused by these racketeers. They'll attempt to play mind games with us if we display any doubt, stammer, or lack of confidence. The appearances of these fake courts are completely for our benefit and intended to invoke fear and intimidation. If we show fear or intimidation, we get a pony ride. The Supreme Court has warned, because of what appeared to be lawful commands on the surface, many citizens, because of their respect for what appears to be law, are cunningly coerced into waiving their rights due to ignorance. U.S. v. Minker, 350 U.S. 179, 187, the powers that be that you are alive and claim the Kestuique Birth Certificate Trust Account, Title 31 U.S. Code 1321-1320 seconds, is what we are supposed to do also, unquote. How does a sovereign avoid prosecution under the trust when taken before a corporate prosecuting attorney or a judge? First, the sovereign must inquire if we are on the record, and if not, insist upon it. Then the sovereign must say nothing, sign nothing, and answer no questions until they are convinced that the proceedings are being recorded. Second, all a sovereign needs say for the record is, I am the beneficiary of the trust I am appointing you as my trustee. Third, the sovereign then directs his trustee to do his bidding by saying, as my trustee, I instruct you to discharge this matter I am accused of and eliminate the record. Fourth, if the sovereign suffered any damages as a result of their arrest, they direct the trust to compensate him from the proceeds of the court by saying, I wish to be compensated for X amount of dollars in redemption. This statement is sufficient to remove the authority and jurisdiction from any prosecuting attorney or judge. The accused will be immediately released from custody with a check, license, or claim he identifies as a damage. It doesn't matter what the action involves or how it is classified by corporate law as a civil or criminal action. But if the system was designed to honor trust law, these techniques would work every time. But they don't because the people in these roles dishonor the trust. Despite this, the principles of trust are sound and in understanding them, we can learn how to act as true and trustworthy sovereigns. While the system is dishonorable, it requires our honorable actions to correct it. The problem is that privately owned for-profit corporations under contract to provide government services have misrepresented themselves as the government and used that presumed position of public trust to defraud and enslave us and levy false claims against us and our assets in the foreign jurisdiction of international commerce. The misuse and abuse of birth certificates and their misrepresentation as voluntary private contracts 
has led to the literal enslavement of hundreds of millions of people worldwide almost a hundred years after slavery was allegedly outlawed. These issues of economic slavery and slavery via corporate proxy must be addressed and the mechanisms used to promote this abuse must be dismantled. The registration of live births in America and throughout the former British Empire, Europe, and Japan is used not to simply record baby births, but to name commercial vessels after those babies. These proxy entities may be variously constructed as estate trusts, foreign situs trusts, or public transmitting utilities. The creators of these incorporated entities that are named after living children then operate these corporations and accrue debts that they illicitly charge against the living people using the deceitfully similar name to defraud the victims. This is a bunco crime known as personage, knowingly mistaking on purpose a living man for a corporation using the same or similar name, like mistaking a man named James Clarence Penny for the retail department store doing business as J.C. Penny. The corollary crime routinely practiced by attorneys and barristers is known as baratry, that means to knowingly bring charges against this corporate proxy as if they are the same as the living soul they are named after and addressing those same souls as defendants in civil and criminal actions. This is the tip of the iceberg of the harm that's routinely done to living souls via the misuse of incorporated proxy entities merely named after them. It's a bribery-based institutionalized fraud scheme that must be recognized for what it is and attacked by every peaceful and determined means possible. When a baby is born, the mother is coerced to sign paperwork. If the mother refuses, she's ordered by menacing doctors and Catholic nuns that she either sign or the baby will be kept in state custody and the mother won't be allowed to take the baby home. There's no excuse for the way many millions of American women are treated and the extortion used to secure an inequitable, involuntary, and unconscionable public commercial interest in our babies as chattel properties being bonded and used as collateral to finance the public debt of these private governmental services corporations pretending to be the American government. Those responsible were and are criminals engaged in press-ganging land assets into the international jurisdiction of the sea, inland piracy, enslavement, human trafficking, unlawful conversion, extortion, racketeering, armed robbery, kidnapping, commercial fraud, and conspiracy against the Constitution for the United States of America. Every person involved must be charged, arrested, and imprisoned without further delay. But the police are employed by the same privately owned and operated corporations that are benefiting themselves from these gross abuses. The police force we depend on to enforce public law are operating as private commercial mercenaries, not as public peacekeeping officers at all. The foxes are guarding the hen houses of America, a circumstance that requires awareness and action by the body politic to resolve it. The organizations we are dealing with are governmental services corporations and not our lawful government. They are merely claiming to represent our government in the absence of our actual government, which is owed to us and which must be provided by us. This addresses the heart of what self-government means. Every living American has more civil authority on the land jurisdiction of the continental United States than the entire federal United States government. It's time we exercise that inherent power and put an end to this gross criminality, fraud, and usurpation by our public servants. Birth Certificate Explained since the early 1960s, state governments have specially created juristic corporate persons signified by all caps and have issued birth certificates to persons with legal fiction all caps names. This is not a lawful record of your physical birth, but rather the birth of the juristic all caps name. It may appear to be your true name, but since no proper name, either lawfully or grammatically, is ever written in all caps and does not identify who you are. The birth certificate is the government's self-created document of title for its new property as deed to the juristic name artificial person whose all caps name mirrors your true name. The birth certificate brings the new all caps name into colorable admiralty maritime law the same way a ship and ship of state is birthed. When a child is born, the hospital sends the original, not a copy, of the record of live birth to the State Bureau of Vital Statistics, also known as the Department of Health and Rehabilitative Services, HRS. 
Each state is required to supply the United States with birth, death, and health statistics. The state agency that receives the original record of live birth keeps it and then issues a birth certificate in the corrupted, all-caps version of the baby's true name, that is, John Jacob Doe. Let's look at the root and definition of the word certificate. Middle English, certificate, from Middle French, Medieval Latin certificatum, neuter of certificatus, past participle of to certify, a document evidencing ownership or debt. The birth certificate issued by the state is then registered with the U.S. Department of Commerce's executive office, specifically through their own sub-agency, the U.S. Census Bureau, which is responsible to register vital statistics from all the states. The word registered, as used within commercial or legal-based equity law, does not mean the all-caps name was merely noted in a book for reference purposes. When a birth certificate is registered with the U.S. Department of Commerce, it means the all-caps legal person named thereon has become a surety or guarantor, a condition and obligation that is automatically and unwittingly assumed unless you rebut the presumption by effectively noticing them. It ain't me. Surety is defined as the person who has pledged himself to pay back money or perform a certain action if the principal to a contract fails as collateral and as part of the original contract. A formal engagement as a pledge given for the fulfillment of an undertaking, one who promises to answer for the debt or default of another. Under the Uniform Commercial Code, however, a surety includes a guarantor, and the two terms are generally interchangeable. A guarantor is defined as a person who pledges collateral for the contract of another, but separately, as part of an independent contract with the obligé of the original contract. It's not difficult to see that a state-created birth certificate with an all-caps name is a document evidencing debt the moment it is issued. Once a state has registered a birth document with the U.S. Department of Commerce, the department notifies the Treasury Department, which takes out a loan from the Federal Reserve. The Treasury uses the loan to purchase a bond. The Fed holds a purchase money security interest in the bond from the Department of Commerce that invests the sale proceeds into the stock or bond market. The Treasury Department then issues Treasury securities in the form of Treasury bonds, notes, and bills using the bonds as surety for the new securities. This cycle is based on the future tax revenues of the legal person whose name appears on the birth certificate. This also means that the bankrupt corporate U.S. can guarantee to the purchasers of their securities the lifetime labor and tax revenues of every United States citizen slash American with a birth certificate as collateral for payment. This device is initiated simply by converting the lawful, true name of the child into a legal, juristic name of a person. Dubucre potissinia pars prinepium est in Latin means the principal part of everything is in the beginning. Well begun is half done. Legally, you are a slave or indentured servant to the federal, state, and local governments via your state-issued and state-created birth certificate in the name of your all-caps person. Birth certificates are issued so that the issuer can claim exclusive title to the legal person created thereby. This is further compounded when one voluntarily obtains a driver license or a social security account number. The state even owns your personal and private life through your state-issued marriage license certificate issued in the all-caps names. You have no rights in birth, marriage, or death. The state holds title to all legal persons it creates via birth certificates until the rightful owner, you, reclaims or redeems it by becoming the holder in due course of the instrument. And your picture shows a registration of a record of birth, which would tend to support the claims about the birth certificate. Why would a record of birth need to be registered? And with the Department of Commerce? Record alone is all that's needed to prove that the birth happened if it's certified, stamped, and signed by a proper officer of a state. Now you know the fraud going on all around you. So please put the camera down now or I'll have my court officer confiscate it. Your Honor, why are you yelling at me? The Supreme Court clearly states I can do that. Your own doorway says I could do that. You're doing it to me, and I checked with your clerk. And I'm also going to wonder what made you run out of the courtroom like that today. You were in such a haste.
Congratulations. Thank you. Go ahead and forward a motion for Mr. Ingress. I do. State versus John Ingress. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Ingress, would you come forward, sir, and join us? Are you notes? saying that the trust you are administering is the John Ingress Trust? Mr. Ingress, if you'd come up, sir, and stand beside Attorney David Al. John Ingress is in the court. That's you, judge as trustee. You are John Ingress today, aren't you? Attorney David Al. Yes, sir. Uh, Before we go any further, I need to know who you are. I am Judge Crocker, right here. Thank you, clerk. Are you the CQV trustee who has appointed this judge as administrator and trustee of the Constructive Trust case number 458-2010-CR-01203? Mr. Attorney David Al, your motion for competency evaluation is uh, granted and we will make, we will ensure that before Mr. David Al, uh, before Mr. David Al, before Attorney Ingress is back before the court that we are uh, sure that he understands the workings of the court. Clerk, did you also uh, appoint the me, prosecutor as executor me, of this constructive Ingress, trust? Mr. Ingress. You are the excuse trustee. Me, Mr. Ingress. And Mr. are Ingress, you not the executor? Mr. Ingress. I'm the beneficiary. Well, and I authorize you to handle the accounting and dissolve this constructive trust. Mr. Ingress. I now claim my Mr. body. Mr. Ingress, I will As I am collapsing the CQV trust. Okay, we will take a brief which you have, recess. Which you have we, charged. Every time we will resume. With as the there is no value in the right trust. You have committed fraud on the court. Did you not create controversy? Can you talk here? Well, Mr. Ingress, it's personal to your case. I don't think you want to do that in public. I'd like to bring his court reporter, a uh, reporter. Mr. Ingress, I just want to let you know that the court is ordering you to speak to a state psychiatrist before this case goes I don't consent. Further. I'm afraid it's a court order. I'm afraid I don't consent to the court order. There are consequences when you don't consent to a court order. There are consequences when a higher law is violated by pretend authorities. Mr. Harris, I'm sorry that you came that way. Probably not best to have this conversation at this moment. Would Please there feel be free to make a conversation, make an appointment to talk to me at my office.